We do not recommend feeding fish oil. Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about the benefits of omega-3 for dogs and cats, but not all omega-3s are the same. So it's really important to choose the right one and we're gonna show you how to do exactly that today. So there actually can be some omega-3s that are toxic for our pets. So we wanna show you how to stay away from the toxic omega-3s and choose the best omega-3 for your pet. With the maximum benefits. Omega-3 is one of the widest recommended supplements from veterinarians or even dog trainers and physiotherapists and for really good reasons. Every pet should really have a really good fresh source of omega-3. But don't get carried away because as mentioned, there are good and bad sources of omega-3. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Probably one of the most widely recommended omega-3 supplements is fish oil. Now you may be surprised to hear that fish oil is not the best source of omega-3 and I'm gonna let you know why. Even though it's really really high in EPA and DHA, there are far better options when it comes to feeding our pets omega-3 and we're gonna explain later in the video why that is. We're gonna tell you exactly what to look out for when buying omega-3 supplements, but first, what are omega-3 fatty acids? Omega-3 fatty acids are polyunsaturated fats and they have been deemed essential for our dogs and cats because our dogs and cats do not make them on their own. The only way for our pets to actually get omega-3 is if they consume them. This makes it extremely important in pet nutrition. That's why omega-3 is so extremely important for our pets. There are two primary groups of fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6. We hear a lot more about omega-3 because it's anti-inflammatory, but there's also omega-6, which is pro-inflammatory. And what we want is to actually get a balance between omega-3 and omega-6. So for optimum health, our pet's diet should actually be containing a ratio between omega-6 to omega-3 between 5 to 1 or 10 to 1 somewhere in between that. However, most pet foods, especially commercial dry food, actually contain somewhere close to 40 to 1, which actually at the end means that our pets are eating a highly pro-inflammatory diet. This is why omega-3 is so important and why supplementation is such a widely spoken about thing because when we're able to add omega-3 to the pet food, we're actually helping to balance that ratio. That's why omega-3 is so widely spoken about. Pets that consume a diet that is high in omega-6 are actually at a higher risk for developing chronic inflammatory diseases such as allergies, arthritis, cancer, Alzheimer, heart disease, diabetes, or obesity. So why is it that commercial pet food can be so high in omega-6? One of the reasons why omega-6 is so high in commercial pet food is because many pet foods are actually grain-based or legume-based. And these types of diets are going to be much higher in omega-6 fatty acids. And even commercial raw pet foods can be high in omega-6. And this is largely due to what the animals are actually consuming. So for example, if a cage-free chicken consumes a diet high in GMO corn, that is likely to contribute to higher omega-6 fatty acids in the pet food. Compared to a pasture-raised chicken that can exercise, that can relieve stress naturally, that sees the sun, that breathes fresh air and eats their actual natural diet that also includes bugs and grass, by the way. Pasture-raised chicken would have a much healthier omega-3 to 6 ratio compared to cage-free chicken. So to kind of balance it out, many pet food manufacturers will add omega-3 oils such as fish oils to the food, but again, we don't recommend fish oil and so do a lot of holistic veterinarians. And we'll get back to that later. We promise. So there are three types of omega-3 fatty acids. You have ALA, EPA, and DHA. ALA comes commonly from plant sources and EPA and DHA are commonly sourced from fish. So when we hear about the benefits of omega-3, there's high chances that we're really hearing about the benefits of EPA and DHA and for very, very, very good reason. Studies have found EPA and DHA can be helpful with the following. 
reducing anxiety, supporting heart health, supporting eye health, supporting brain health, helping to fight cognitive decline, helping to fight Alzheimer, helping to fight autoimmune disease, lowering inflammation, and reducing the risk of developing cancer, helping to improve bone and joint health, skin health, and that nice shiny coat that uh, we see on our animals. So as you can see, adding omega-3 to the diet is extremely beneficial in supporting the health of our animals. All right, so before we start talking about fish oil and why we don't recommend fish oil, make sure you like and subscribe this channel so you get updated every time we make awesome videos like this. Hit the bell notification. All right, getting back to our little secret that we're gonna let you in. Yes, it is true that EPA and DHA is abundantly found in fish oil, but we have never recommended it to anyone in our community. We have never offered it at Podega for very good reason. Fish oil can be extremely toxic, especially because it can be loaded with heavy metals and it also easily oxidizes as soon as it's exposed to light, air, or heat. And studies show that Fish oil oxidation can actually lead to organ damage. If you want to know more about why we don't recommend fish oil, make sure you hit this video up here where we speak about the dangers of fish oil and we will speak, as promised, more about the alternatives to fish oil. In this video. In this video. So finally, let's talk about the best omega-3 supplements and best omega-3 sources for your dog and cat. So the first one that we're gonna talk about is wild-caught, small, oily fish, such as mackerel, sardines, herring, Sprats. sprat, all the small, oily fish. Why? Because small, oily fish are going to be at the bottom of the food chain, which makes them less toxic compared to larger fish of the ocean because our oceans are completely polluted with heavy metals, with toxins. And when we feed our pets small oily fish, we are actually giving them less toxins. So it's going to be less toxic on the food chain. So make sure you watch this video for our tips and tricks and our favorite fish to feed our dog. So the next recommendation is going to be an awesome one because this is algae oil by Dork Beast and I absolutely love this one because it's extremely high in EPA and DHA and what is really really great about it is that it does not harm the ocean, it's actually grown on land and it contains high amounts of EPA and DHA. Plus, it's actually third party tested to be free of heavy metals. So it's a great way to actually rotate different omega-3 sources. Personally, we don't rely on just fish for our omega-3. We always rotate with algae oil to reduce toxins and to just have you know, variety. Variety is the space of life. So why is this important? Microalgae is nature's original source of omega-3. And this is where fish gets their omega-3 from. Here's a fun fact. You would actually need to feed a 50 pound dog 45 green lip mussels in one day in order to get the same EPA and DHA levels that you get with just a few drops of the algae oil from Adored Beast. So yeah. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely insane. Yeah. So as you can see, that is a lot of EPA and DHA with a lot of health benefits. Another source of omega-3 is hemp seed oil. And I don't recommend that to be the only source of omega-3 for your dog and cat. This hemp seed oil is really great to be rotated between the algae oil and the fish for extra omega-3 benefit. Hemp seed oil does contain omega-3, 6, and 9, and in particular it contains ALA, GLA, and LA. So again, our most recommended sources of omega-3, healthy omega-3 sources, are fish, algae oil, and hemp seed oil. And we love to rotate. Variety is the spice of life, so always rotate your omega-3s. Now, there are other omega-3s that you can actually feed to your dog. So let us know in the comment section what types of omega-3 you like to feed. Off the top of my head, I know there's other omega-3s like flaxseed oil, for example. So just let us know what you like to feed. We love to learn 
what you guys are feeding and it makes the community stronger and it makes us better pet parents. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and we will see you at the next video. See ya! Bye! Bye!